Three days later. Welcome back and hello. Today we are going to put together our own ADSB in receiver. So what is ADSB anyway? Well, it stands for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. And it kind of works in the background and it depends on other aircraft uh, being equipped with ADSB receivers to see it. And it's also a technology to cr uh, track aircraft. So each aircraft broadcasts its own position and velocity, a few other uh, parameters. And the idea is that air traffic control and other aircraft receive uh, that picture it'll be easier to track other aircraft and give other aircraft the ability to see uh, surrounding aircraft on their displays, whether it be an electronic flight bag or uh, some uh, more advanced avionics. Again, not all aircraft uh, have the ability to transmit ADSB data out. That requires a Mode S transponder with ADSB out capability, uh, but there's nothing to stop you from having a receiver that can receive those signals. I'm not going to give like a full uh, blown explanation of ADSB in or out. Uh, there's a billion videos out there on the internet. Uh, but here we're going to show that uh, you don't have to go out and buy an expensive Stratus certified uh, portable receiver or anything. In fact, because it is portable and not part of the equipment of the aircraft and we're not being uh, dependent on this for um, any kind of IFR flying, we can use a portable uncertified uh, device. Uh, for VFR flight as long as we're like not depending solely on this for uh, traffic and situational awareness. And, and the neat thing about this Strat-X device is that the developers have uh, made the software open source and free so you can download the image and install it uh, into an SD card using the standard Raspberry Pi flash tools and it uh, works with a lot of flight bags so we're talking for flight, uh, flight plan go, and like a, a whole list, maybe 20 other different pieces of software. So you can use the software that you like best. Okay, now that's all explained out of the way. Let's go to the, the assembly of this. And here's a Raspberry Pi from a previous project. So we're just gonna rip that out and repurpose this and give it a new life. Oh, and one thing I almost forgot to mention, uh, if you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, it is a miniature computer uh, that you can buy. It started as an ed educational tool, but it turned it to be uh, pretty useful for general purposes so like it's about the size of a credit card and ranges from 50 to you know a hundred dollars or so depending on the model and they come like it's a full-blown computer it has usb ports um it has wi-fi it has bluetooth uh a cpu ram and uh yeah like all you have to do is put in like usb power and an sd card for storage and you got yourself a uh, like a fully capable mobile computer. So they're really cool for projects like this. Millions of different uh, use cases for these things. Uh, if you want to look up more about uh, Raspberry Pi, you just type in Raspberry Pi as in P-I. And it, there's endless projects for these things. Yeah, and here are the various parts, the different uh, receivers. So the uh, 978 and the 1090, as well as the GPS receiver. I have that AHARS uh, um, device as well, but uh, we'll get into that later. And yeah, it came with some tools, the antennas, the high gain antennas. And uh, yeah, so let's rip out this Raspberry Pi. Let's just yank this out of the old case. And yeah, here we go. I already got the uh, heat sinks on there from the previous build, so I won't have to install those. And it, it's pretty easy. We just take out these USB devices uh, and we, we just plug them in according to the manual. Uh, the developers have included a manual so you can follow it step by step. Yeah, there's the 10, the 1090, the 780, and then this is the AHARS header. So that's supposed to give you attitude and, and a few other things as well as a uh, fan speed controller. Uh, so once we put that on the GPIO header there, uh, we get a, a fan speed uh, header there too. So this is the GPS receiver going in. Then we got the, uh, I believe that's the 978 and then the 1090 on the end there. Okay, so we got the GPS, the 1090, and the 978 receivers. They should go in just like this. 
Now I already had the heat sinks from the previous build on there, so I don't have to add new ones. So I should be able to uh, screw this board in. But first I need to hook up the, the fan header to that pin there. Okay, so I got it all in there. Just gonna do a quick mock-up before I screw everything in. I think I actually forgot a step. I should screw in these antennas first uh, before putting the board in. Come on. Now we gotta go flash the SD card. Flash failed. Alright, this is where it failed last time. Alright. Let's fire it up. Yoink! Okay, so with typical technology, it doesn't really work the first time, especially when you're assembling your own thing or flashing your own drives. And it was the this thing was just rebooting over and over and over again. I plugged in the HDMI into the monitor, see what's going on, but uh, there was some kind of incompatibility with the the disk image and uh, the AHARS device. So I got a different disk image with the AHARS uh, software in there, and it booted up. Okay, I didn't capture it, but I used a different. Uh image one that includes the drivers for the ahars and yeah it booted up so now we should be able to access it okay cool so yeah it's working now i took out the ahars header and here we go look at that we got traffic reporting in we got some weather data let's see what else we got maybe there's something way in the distance this thing's picking up again we're not going to get uh, the greatest reception because I am in a building right now and uh, this thing's not exactly uh, sticking out <laughs> into the world nor are we at altitude uh, but you know at least we're picking up some of these planes here that's pretty cool I'm gonna can't wait to try this out in the plane okay so this is working much better um, not only did I remove this AHRS module I reflashed the firmware to be the version with that doesn't support this. So I think the uh, Raspberry Pi kept looking for the device, even though it wasn't there. That was uh, eating up CPU cycles. Uh, so now I'm just uh, without the uh, uh, referential device and the older firmware, and it didn't boot loop anymore. Uh, and uh, things are firing up a lot faster and it seems to be uh, chugging along a lot um, uh, smoother too but uh, the funny thing is when the GPS is getting a lock <laughs> the positions uh, changing so uh, it thinks I'm flying right now as it's uh, zeroing in on on the satellites and I'm getting like ground speeds that uh, look a you know more like a 172 than a desk Okay, now the GPS is all fixed. Uh, not fixed, but it has a fix. Let's see what we can do. Traffic breadcrumbs here. And radar. I don't know. No teams. I don't see the traffic breadcrumbs that it's talking about. And it looks like the GPS lost signal again. And then that's because it's not exactly pointing in the right direction outside. Um, I'll try, what do you call it? I'll try uh, uh, buttoning this up back together, put it on the window, see if it'll have a better chance of getting a GPS lock. And uh, yeah, see how it works. I, I still think it'll be bad because if it's not exactly um, uh, got a good line of sight to a satellite. Uh, from this window at this angle.
Okay, so I totally botched up filming that. I didn't have uh, the gear to for uh, on hand to mount a camera angle that would be better suited to look at the phone, so I apologize for that. Uh, but yeah, the device works as advertised. I get ADS-B in and I get GPS. Um, yeah, so it, it was working pretty well. And uh, when I was nearby aircraft that were, uh, was transmitting ADS-B out, it would show up on the map, which was really cool. Uh, but one thing I do uh, did learn and I want to tweak is the, uh, you know, show me aircraft that are, you know, plus or minus a few thousand feet for me because I was getting a lot of traffic that was uh, airliners flying overhead at higher altitudes and they were kind of cluttering the map uh, and becoming a bit of a distraction. So, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to uh, switch that out. Uh, I did have one issue uh, on the way back where the GPS just went completely skittish. And you can see the line is like almost like coloring in the town. Uh, but uh, luckily with uh, the app I was using, I could switch over to the GPS that was on my phone, uh, which seemed to be uh, working better at the time. So there may be a few bugs here and there, but when I was using uh, the GPS before, it was uh, pretty damn accurate. So uh, I'm not sure what was causing the issue there, if there was some kind of interference or if there was a bug or something overheating, but I always had the option to switch back to uh, my phone's GPS. And if you stuck around uh, this long, uh, thank you for watching and hope you found it entertaining. I'll see you in the next one.